Okay, so we are a week on from the Collins Cup and I'm gonna tell you all about it and dive into a bit of a behind the scenes of what went on. There is a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by So the week building into the race was pretty crazy. We had an endless list of media commitments, briefings, press conferences, photo shoots, um, like media scrum, so where you'd actually go and speak to different media outlets. So it was a jam-packed schedule. Obviously, we're all athletes leading into a race, so we need to get all of our key final sessions ticked off as well, but we were in the perfect location to do that at Xbionic with their amazing facilities, which made it a lot easier. So it is pretty late, I've just made it to x Barnick and feels pretty cool to be back. I um, haven't been here since 2019, the last time I raced the Challenge Championship, which obviously was um, my third time winning the race, so a really, really good memories from being here. But this time we're back for something completely new, completely different um, with the Collins Cup. And yeah, I'm really excited to get stuck into this week. It's obviously a lovely hotel. The PTO had provided all of our meals, so we had access to the Olympic buffet. I feel like I'm probably quite fortunate as an athlete that is quite used to having a lot on my schedule leading into a race when I've raced in Kona, Challenge Roth. All of these quite big races always have quite a lot of media and press around the event. So I'm quite experienced in that, um, but it's always a bit of a struggle trying to fit it in around all of your key sessions, particularly when the pressure is building, you're leading into a massive race, it's going to be televised, you know you want to do well, you're also representing the team, um, so managing it all was really, really important. Okay, so I've just done my first session here at X Bionic. It's so cool to be back. Um, just did a nice little 4K swim, feeling really good. So that's uh, making me feel good about being here and getting ready to race. So yeah, everything's getting quite exciting. Things are getting set up, all the bannerings being put up. So yeah, time to get some food. Okay, just doing a little Zwift ride here in the X Bionic in my room on the turbo. Um, using Zwift. Just doing six little short efforts today just to spin my legs out from two days of travelling around, even Lanzarote, heading here to Samarin. And yeah, legs don't feel too bad. I'm going to do a bit of a track style run off the bike after this. And then I've got a bit of a photo shoot in my race suit this evening before dinner. So busy day number one. Yeah, so obviously this is the first time in triathlon that we've had an event of this kind. It's always been very much an individual sport, but this was the first time I was part of a team of 12 athletes representing Europe, and it definitely had a completely different feel leading into the race. Like it just brought all of the athletes together. There was a lot more fun going on. We were just bonding, discussing tactics, discussing everything together as a team, having team meetings. We obviously had captains as well for our team. And we had like a team lounge at the x where we could all go and hang out, drink coffee um, and just talk triathlon and probably a lot of not triathlon as well. I felt like it just brought everyone together, particularly during this difficult time where COVID has limited athletes from traveling, we just haven't seen each other for like almost two years. So it was just nice to catch up with everyone and it felt like a really fun and relaxed kind of vibe despite this massive event that was about to happen. Okay, so just been for my first ride outside here in Samarin. 
obviously I've done the uh, championship bike course uh, three years in a row. So went out and headed on there, really, really good. Felt fast, bike feels really good. Everything's working well. So yeah, legs felt all right as well, which is always a plus. Um, we're actually gonna be racing on a brand new course on Saturday, which is gonna be on a brand new motorway, which they're actually closing for us. The ATK on Saturday is gonna be so fast. Um, but obviously most of Samarin and this area is pretty flat. So looking forward to a flat and fast course on Saturday. But yeah, already feeling good. Bikes feeling good. Get ready to go. So currently just out for another little spin here on the old championship course in Samarin. Um, it's a bit wet and wild today. Hoping this clears up for race day. I mean, I don't really care what the weather's like for racing, but just generally will look nice on TV if it's sunny. Legs feel pretty good, bike feels good. Yeah, excited to race now. So leading into the draw for who we were up against, I definitely had a feeling I would either get put up against Taylor Nib or Katie Safires. Obviously, being a long course athlete that's dipped my toe into short course racing, I felt like it made sense for me to get put against one of the short course girls. Obviously, the girls who have the ITU background are the stronger swimmers. So again, it made sense for me to be put against Katie. Obviously, that's who I did end up up against uh, because she has got a strong swim. It was going to make our match a lot more interesting if I actually got stacked up against someone that could swim with me. I didn't really know who the other person would be on the Team International, but I always enjoy racing Paula. I wouldn't have minded racing Sarah Crowley. We've had some good battles before. I'm a big fan of Ellie Salthouse, so I wouldn't have minded having a battle with her. Um, but yeah, I got stacked up against Paula Finlay. Um, we've raced a couple of times before. We were kind of like one all on the races that we've done against each other before. So um, Paula beat me at Challenge Daytona, and then I had the uh, better result at Challenge Miami. So this was like our third match that we've had together. So I'm kind of one of those athletes that it wouldn't have mattered who you put me up against. I was just gonna go all in anyway and try and get the points for Team Europe. But yeah, that's what I love about the format because you were there Monday, Tuesday of race week and you didn't even know who you were gonna be racing against yet. So that kind of just adds to the fun and the excitement of this format of racing. Okay, so final little leg spin before the race tomorrow, just 35 minutes on the turbo, just getting the legs ready to race, a little bit of blood flowing through them don't feel too bad so I'm hoping they're gonna feel really good tomorrow please excuse my uh, appearance I look like Cindy Lou from the Grinch uh, if you don't know who that is I'm sure Holly will put a photo in for comparison um, but yeah feeling good we've done all of the media stuff you can imagine we had the press conference this morning um, it's been a super busy few days uh, but the same for all the athletes so I think all of us are just so excited to race now there's still like a massive amount of anticipation because we're not entirely sure what to expect but um, I can expect that we are all going to be going all in for our team so it's almost go time here in Samarin and I'm really excited to race now. Good morning, it is race morning. It is the day of the Collins Cup. It is finally here. Can't believe it. It's been a mad few days getting to this point, um, but I'm sure it's all gonna be worth it for the coverage that's gonna go out there onto the TV. Um, the braids are in, the drinks were made last night, so they're ready to take down. I've got just under three hours until I start. The bike's pretty much ready. I've just got to inflate the tires um, in just under an hour. I can go to transition. Put everything in there and then just chill because I'll have about two hours till I'm off. So yeah, it is almost time to go. Um, my training has been going so well. I'm feeling in really good shape. So I'm just hoping that I can show that today. Do Team Europe proud. And yeah, you're not gonna wanna miss this. So stay tuned because it is gonna be an epic day of racing. I definitely think I just never have a game plan. Like I'm just always willing to go all in, to hurt, to battle against someone if we're head for head in the race. Um, the swim is obviously my strongest discipline, so I feel like I need to use that 
to maximise my advantage. However, I did expect Katie to be the swimmer that was going to be on my feet. I didn't think it was likely that I would drop her. Particularly as it's a wetsuit swim, I don't get as much as an advantage in a wetsuit as maybe a slightly weaker athlete. So I just had to swim strong but not use too much energy just to make sure that I could have a good bike and a good run. We also had a storm come in as we were out on the bike, which kind of changed the dynamic because we went from it being quite mild to actually being quite cold. So you had to manage that. And then you also had to be really careful on the turns because it was starting to get very wet and slippery. And then I guess my game plan was always to try and have a strong run off the bike. Unfortunately, I was not feeling well at all by that point. Um, so I was just trying to do as much as I could for the team at that point. Um, obviously going into a race, you never anticipate that you're not going to feel well. Um, but yeah, I was pretty happy with the outcome, despite not everything going as smoothly as I might have liked. Okay, so back in the hotel after the race, um, absolutely amazing event, really, really happy with Team Europe for winning and amazing to be part of the team. Um, I definitely went all in uh, today, even though I definitely didn't feel 100%, I couldn't keep anything down on the bike and then the run was pretty much a disaster um, with stomach issues, won't go into details because no one needs to hear about it, but Currently trying to eat some rice in the room, gutted to miss the finished presentation with Team Europe and celebrate with them. Really sorry I couldn't be there because I'm like just so thankful to the PTO for putting on this amazing event, getting triathlon the coverage that it deserves as a sport. So it definitely isn't a reflection of that me not being at the finish, it's just that I am far too sick to go down there. So really sorry but amazing event and yeah I'm gonna try and get better soon. Well I feel like I've gained a lot of confidence being able to run being in the dire state that I was in on that run so that's definitely put some confidence into me leading into the 70.3 worlds but that was a great warm-up event I think so obviously the Collins Cup was slightly shorter it was an 18 kilometer run but I actually felt really strong and felt really comfortable running at that pace despite the way I was feeling in my stomach and everything that was going on. Um, so yeah, it's a good positive tick forward leading into the 70.3 World Champs. So something I just remembered, which is quite an important update, was I actually didn't take any sugar for the entire run because I just knew my stomach wouldn't tolerate it. So at four kilometres on the run, there was a special aid station where I had a electrolyte and water mix. Uh, it had a gel tape to it, but I had the water and the electrolyte, but I just knew I couldn't stomach the gel. Um, and then I didn't have any sugar at all for the whole run. So I just had a little bit of electrolyte and then a little bit of water at around eight, nine K, but there was no way I could stomach any sugar. So yeah, finally, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to the PTO for putting on the Collins Cup. This has been years in the making. COVID has delayed it, but all of us athletes, I'm sure I can speak for all of us, are so grateful for the work that has gone into this. It's putting our sport on the global stage that it deserves. Kind of diving into the different athlete stories that even I didn't know and have been inspired by, like just hearing the journeys that athletes have been on to get to this point. And I think that's such a big part of our sport for the 
outside world to know that, but also it's just so motivating and inspiring for us athletes to hear that. And there's always been a huge level of respect between triathletes, but I just think that brings even more of it into it when you know the kind of hardship and the difficulties that different athletes go through to get to a start line, especially at one of these huge kind of stage races. So yeah, massive thank you to the PTO for doing that. And I'm really excited for where our sport is heading and hopefully the future big events that are going to happen as well. Um, yeah, so really excited for what the future holds for triathlon. Okay, so thanks for watching. A little wrap up of the Collins Cup. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, make sure to like and subscribe for future videos.